uh, investors cannot build companies. Only founders can build companies and investors can only screw up. Hi, welcome. This is Tech Leaps All In. In seven episodes, we explore the personal entrepreneurial journey of skill up founders and leaders. This episode is about money. How important is it and how do you recognize the right type of money? First question for you is how important is money both for your business and for you as a person? Wow. How important is money? I think if you say money is not important, you're super privileged. <laughs> Starting this business was not a, a decision to see, hey, how, how can I become rich the fastest? Then, then I might have gone a different different route, right? It, well, I think I'm more driven by making the company a success, right? Successful in the sense of uh, loads of people uh, wanting to to use our software and therefore pay for it. If I can pay my rent and kind of like you know have a place to sleep, uh, you know, like uh, a nice kitchen, as long as I can like continue doing what I do, at least for now, I'm happy. But for my company, yeah, it's key. Otherwise, you can't make smartphone. It, it requires a lot of money, actually. From the business side, it's, of course, really important in terms of uh, it's basically your survival uh, as a company. Especially in most like early stage startups, it's, you're usually spending more money than you're earning early on in the day. But I see money really as a mean to realize something. So it's not really a goal in itself to have money or to create money. Uh, you need money to create something. So my perspective is the best business you can have is a business that wants to do good, but it needs to be a good business. So the more money that we make, the more impact we can have. Why would we not want to make lots of money? And how do you find investors? A lot of work. I think it's about looking people in the eye and seeing whether they're the sort of people that you want to spend time with. What's your growth plan? What, what do you want to achieve? What do you need? Do you even need investors, uh, right? If you can do it without investors, Maybe that's the way to do it. You know, you, you literally get into a relationship with. It doesn't appear like that, but that is what's happening. And it's a very important relationship. In the beginning, we worked a lot with angel investors because we really needed men, uh, people that trusted us, um, were inspired by our mission. We went through a few incubation programs early on. So that was one of the, I guess, uh, they connect you to large networks. Uh, there's a lot of network opportunities there, so you meet a lot of potential investors. And I mean, nine out of 10 investors say, yeah, you're a student, you don't have full-time commitment, so I don't invest you or your company because uh, I need full-time commitment. Until we found the investor that said, I want you to finish your studies. And that was like, hey, this is important to us. They value that as well. Okay, this seems like a match. We were lucky with our first investor. We pitched to a lot of um, mainly Dutch but European uh, investors and it always felt like we were taking a test. So we were pitching for, for 10 minutes and then we always got the same four or five questions and then we had to give the right answer to the question. We let other, well, uh, very known founders, uh, well, a few of them, like, like the founder of Achen or uh, Jesse Takeaway, uh, also invested crisp, uh, in CRISP and also help us in, well, going into the next phase. And uh, Jason, who was also on our board since, since that first funding round, he was not at the other end of the table, but he was, it felt like he was at the same side of the table. So he was thinking with, okay, so if you do that, how would that, how would that then go? And he was curious and trying to already think with us how he was going to do, how we were going to do things. For our Series B, we really wanted institutional venture capitalists on, on board, especially with a, a track record in, uh, in Europe. Um, so, and also on the terms that we, if they believe in us as a founding team, it often reflects in the terms like more freedom. What are the negative sides of accepting a big sum of money? It gives a pressure and specifically crowdfunding, because it's a lot of family and friends, it also comes with pressure. You do need to uh, deliver. Well, the negative side of money is that you become too much focused on money. And more money is not always better, because you, you also have more requirements of conditions, probably. In the end, with a professional investor, it is a bit the same. They also bring that money to you and say, okay, 
and now you're going to deliver. The downside to raising uh, outside investment is you're not always in charge of your own destiny. You'd like to think that and you'd like to believe that you're always in charge of your own destiny, but there's an influencing factor. Keep as much creative uh, decision-making power as possible, because uh, once you start to lose that, uh, you know, external decision-making comes into play and then you're, you kind of have to adapt to that. And have you ever turned down money? Yeah. Why? We thought it stunk. Yes. Why? Because the terms uh, we found uh, unacceptable. You know that you know, their, their longer-term goal is not going to match up with your longer-term goal. Yes, we did. Why? Uh, definitely no cultural fit. It's the shortest answer. There is absolutely truth in, the fact, in that sort of saying that if it, if it looks too good to be true, it is too good to be true. In, in general, you want to, to, to um, make some sort of healthy split between the money and the power. And yes, of course, yeah, money comes with power and, and, and the power also yeah, to be really powerful needs money. But for example, by that not having one majority shareholder um, does that a bit. How do you navigate between shareholder and stakeholder value? I don't know how to create shareholder value without thinking of, uh, of the stakeholders, right? Our customers and our employees, um, they are the ones that create the value. I think it's by, by realizing that shareholders are a stakeholder and they're a very important uh, stakeholder, but that they're not the only ones. Uh, employees are a very big stakeholder. Uh, society is a big stakeholder. At some point, consumers for us will be stakeholders. Suppliers are stakeholders. So I think the shareholder benefits and the stakeholder benefits are quite, like they the, the correlate pretty well in terms of, you know, if the stakeholders are happy, the shareholders are probably going to be happy as well. Uh, just because uh, stakeholders are I think, the first people to see, uh, usually, if things are working or not. And then the shareholders, uh, if they see uh, that the stakeholders are happy, I think that you can already kind of guess that the product's working pretty well. And how do you remain in control over your business when multiple investors are involved? I think it all comes down to how you respond to opportunities and threats. If you, if you um, don't see threats coming and even worse if you don't act towards those threats and even the other way around opportunities then I believe there's a you create a mistrust or you create a sense of the not the right people in the right place I think it's it's again about having the right having the right investors uh, for example we have a couple of US investors and one of them said hey literature shows it time and time and again. Uh, investors cannot build companies. Only founders can build companies and investors can only screw up. Um, so I spent quite some time uh, talking to the investors, um, uh, updating them, also listening to them on what they think should be the priorities of the company. But that does mean that I have a responsibility towards them, right? And that's making sure that I'm always honest on where we are, what the struggles are and where, uh, which things are going well. Uh, our first investors were almost also like our, we, we, we would reach out for with them with a thousand questions for like, you know, finance, accounting, fundraising. But that's also what your investors are for. And that's why I said that you want to have good investors in terms of who are inclined for you to succeed as well. Because they have a lot of resources usually on the team that they can help you out with. Being absolutely upfront. Again, if you see it as a relationship um, and you're hiding something or you're not being completely upfront about why this party is coming in and what they're going to get for their money, you're in trouble. The ability to stay in control is just locked into terms and conditions, I would say. Yeah, it's quite practical, actually. Sometimes you don't realize that you have so much knowledge in your field because you're busy working in it and you just don't realize that people that are just starting, that you can be added value for them.